Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to the future. On today's show, on today's show, we're going to be talking about whether or not you should work while in school. It doesn't matter if you're going to design school, if you're studying architecture, if you're becoming an attorney, whatever it is, I have a very strong point of view on this, on whether or not you should work in school. And I made a video about this. Now, I want to give some context for the show before we kind of invite our other panelists to debate this discussion with us. And Matthew is going to share the Zoom webinar link within this YouTube and Facebook so that if you guys want to join us, if you have a strong point of view one way or the other, I would love to talk to you about this, okay? Now, the, the episode I'm talking about in particular was this one called Resist the Temptation to Work While in School. And this was a kind of off-the-cuff conversation I had with some students who visited here from Cal State Northridge where they were talking about whether or not they should work in school. And a teacher was recommending that they didn't and I agreed with that teacher. And why did I agree with them? Why did I agree with them? The reason is is this, is because we kind of look at, I will just do, do the math with you guys. Erica, can we come back to me? I wanna just do the math with you guys. If you are going to a private art school as I did, it's quite expensive and you're paying a bit of money to go to a private art school. So if you're looking at a school like say Art Center or Otis or Cal Arts, it's going to be somewhere around 20,000 US dollars per semester. So if you go to school and you pay somebody a lot of money to learn something, does it make sense then to go get a job at a much lower rate? So that's one about finances. And then some people are going to counter that. You can learn more by doing that. The best way to learn is through, through experience um, and by, by taking action. So then this raises the question. And the reason why I have such a strong opinion about this is if you're not learning while in school anymore and you're getting a better education elsewhere, why are you still going to school? That's what we want to talk about today. That's what we're going to do. So I'd love to hear your comments and questions and your point of view. This is going to be one of those special RAWs where we've made it easy for you to jump in on the conversation with us. All you have to do is join the Zoom webinar link and let people know I have a strong opinion and Matthew will be moderating it. If you have a really great question or comment, he's going to activate you so that you can get on camera and you can join us live on the show. Well, I'm not going to talk anymore. Let's keep it real. Let's keep it raw. Erica, please roll the titles. All right, welcome back to the show. Now, I'm sure there are a lot of opinions, and the reason why I want to do a follow-up episode to this was because there was a lot of dissent. There was a lot of disagreement, even on Twitter, saying that it is absolutely necessary and vital for some people just to pay for cost of living to do that. And I totally understand that because not everybody can afford education. Not everybody has parents who are willing to do that or lives in a country or some place where education is affordable. And I understand that because I, too, had to struggle with paying for my tuition while going to school. But I always thought that if it got to be really, really desperate, I would exhaust every means to me prior to working. The first option I would exhaust is I use my credit cards. I pretty much max out every single one of my credit cards in order to pay for school, to pay for supplies, and to cover the gap in which I wasn't able to, to get in a student loan or my parents weren't giving me enough so that I can get through school. And so I just use credit cards. Okay. The other thing that I wound up doing was cutting back all of my living expenses down to the bare minimum. I'm not living a lavish lifestyle while in school. Now, it's, it's a hard, it may be hard to believe this, but while going to Art Center, I had many friends who were upper middle class or upper class or just downright filthy rich, and they would be busy driving in their sports kind of European cars and shopping at Barney's and things like that. I was eating bread sandwiches with liverwurst and tomatoes or eating top ramen, doing whatever it is that I needed to do. And the reason why I stayed away from working while in school was because I spent every waking moment, every little bit of energy that I had in my, my little body to, to learn more or to challenge myself by taking more classes or taking classes that I had really no right to be a part of. And I'll give you an example of what that is. So I studied graphic design while going to Art Center, but I wanted to improve my skills in illustration and in 3D graphics. So I took 3D modeling classes, which was kind of pretty brand new back in the 1990s, the early 90s, okay? And I was taking illustration and painting classes next to people who were illustration majors. Now, I felt really intimidated. I didn't have the skills, but in just doing that, I learned so much more. 
And I also took classes where you, uh, it's called VizCom, which is what industrial designers take at Art Center, where there's like a really the incredible drafting skills. And I remember having a conversation with a teacher because I was clearly far behind everybody else. And the teacher told me, I cannot slow the class down for one student. It is uh, expected for each student to be able to work at a certain level. And I, I just can't do that. So ultimately, I understood that and I had to drop the class. And the rest of my time I spent either in the computer lab working on digital skills or in the library while it was still open. So that's my life and those are my experiences. And I do want to say one thing because in case there are some friends of mine, colleagues or classmates of mine from school who noticed like I was working. So I'm not being a hypocrite when I say that. And I'll, I'll share more about that in a little bit. Hey, Matthew and Aaron, did you guys work while you guys were in school? Just out of curiosity. I did. I also went to Art Center, just like you. Yep. And the first half of me attending Art Center, I did have two different jobs during the, that time period. So I did work for a non-profit as a graphic designer. And then I also worked... Your mic is, is not top-facing? Oh, okay. So there you go. There we go. Yeah. Sorry, technical difficulties. <laughs> it's like we've never done this show before. Yeah, I know. It's been a while. <laughs> and, and, you know, I would expect your two uh, uh, castmates here to like, hey, Matthew, Help me uh, out, right? but I'll, I'll exit the room and tell you. It's yeah, cool. yeah. No, that's right, fine. Keep going. Okay, yeah, so I, I, I worked two jobs when I was at Art Center, uh, two different jobs, one uh, as a graphic designer as a, at a nonprofit, and I also worked retail for a little bit, and that was just the first few terms at Art Center, and the reason being was... You know, I got into Art Center coming from a different design school already. So I felt a little cocky. I felt a little arrogant and I felt ahead of the, the curve because I went into the classes. I didn't really try that hard mm. and I still got A's. So I just felt like, you know, I, I, I have time to balance. <laughs> you know, I didn't really value um, a lot of the fun fundamental stuff that I did uh, early on at Art Center. And so I was just it was it was my ego. That, w that was in the way. Mm -hmm. And then at a certain point, about halfway through my education, I got introduced to motion design. I took your class, Chris, and just learned about this whole new world because I was previously studying print design and packaging. And then I discovered motion design. And that was totally new to me. I had no idea that you could do, that you could combine animation and design and do that for a living and do that for TV commercials. And it was incredibly hot at that moment. So at that point, I stopped all of my jobs. I focused 100% on school, and then I converted and got very focused on all of my classes. Nice. Uh, I think John Roth might have something to say about that. Cool story, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Glad we have him immortalized in that. Yes, we have. We were able to there. capture his essence before he, he flew <laughs> the coop. Anyways, I, I do want to clarify a couple of things about your story because I know a little bit more about it. You went to another art institution, and I think you were shy of graduating, right? Or did you graduate? I mean, I, I finished with my associate's degree, okay. and I didn't pursue my bachelor's. So I, because I felt that particular school wasn't that competitive for me, so I wanted to go to another school to be more competitive. I, I was just like ahead of everybody there. So I was just like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm bored of this school. Let me go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Hear all these great things about Art Center. I wasn't serious about it enough before. Mm -hmm. So I transferred to Art Center, of course. As soon as I get to Art Center, I'm a little bit complacent, you know, because I'm right, still right. getting A's in the class. So what's what's the point? Right. So let, let, I have extra time. I need the extra money. Let me just take a job at the same time. Right. So I think there's it, it's it's worthwhile to kind of highlight a specific moment here. You finish getting your art uh, associate in arts degree, mm -hmm. and you're you were just really thinking that you need a bachelor's degree, mm -hmm. and you were already kind of acing everything and ahead of all your classmates. So. I guess in, in a way you had a right to feel kind of confident whether you say cocky or not what whatever and so you're really pursuing initially a degree at Art Center just so you can say you have a bachelor's degree right that's correct and so you were just kind of going through the motions in the beginning so you felt like you know this isn't really that challenge so you didn't really apply yourself mm -hmm. it's not until you actually figured out what it is that you wanted to do and found out man this is actually kind of hard that you really focused in like laser focused Mm -hmm. that you then had to stop all your other activities. That's correct. So had you discovered that at the very beginning, if you approached school a little bit differently, that would have happened at the at day one. That's that, my opinion. That's correct. Yeah, if I okay. already had my clear goal mm -hmm. to begin with and I knew where I was going to go exactly, 
then I probably would have approached school very differently. Right, and that was my experience because to me, the lower terms, terms one through four, where all the foundational things are taught, are some of the most important things that you can learn. By skipping over some of that, as some, many of my classmates did, and they didn't really fully apply themselves, when they got into the upper terms, into advanced graphic design studios and advanced concepts or advertising, they started to crumble because they didn't master the foundation or the fundamentals first. So this is a, a really a discussion about that, whether or not you can, should, have to, and what you're giving up. In everything in life, whether it be about pursuing a particular client or doing a pet project of yours, you have to kind of realize the one thing that's consistent and constant to, with all of us is you have a finite amount of time here on earth. Right? You, when you do something, when you choose to do something, you're taking time away from doing something else. So the first question I want to throw out to our audience and, and people who are attending the live webinar here is just to think about this, is, is there more that you can be doing while in school? Have you eked out every single drop of knowledge that you're paying for already? Because the rate in which you're getting paid to do work is going to be far less than what you've paid to acquire that education that you're supposed to be getting. So if you're not getting that education, that's a different conversation to begin with. But assuming that you're going to a good school that has great, passionate teachers and it's got a great, robust program, you have to start to ask yourself, why am I doing something else rather than getting what I paid for? That's the first part of this conversation. So let's open it up. Is there anybody in the webinar that has a point of view, either in agreement or disagreement or wants to share an experience? Yeah, I think... Uh well, Erica has her experience. Okay, so Erica wants to say something? Yeah. yeah Let's I, rock and roll, Erica. I went to Ringling College of Art and Design, and I had a, a job, but they were on-campus jobs, mm -hmm. and I needed to earn money because I was paying for it myself. Mm -hmm. So I started in the uh, an office job, mm -hmm. and then I got a job at the... Art Network, which is all Ringling Television, they film everything, which is how I learned how to camera and how to edit and everything. So that was kind of uh, a learning, but I still got paid for it kind of thing. So it sort of fed into more of what I was learning. So that was helpful for me. The office job was, you know, filing and stuff like that, which, helped the monotony of that, helped free my brain a little bit so mm -hmm. I could think clearer for projects. Mm -hmm. So that in that way, it helped me. Okay. But it didn't take up too much of my time. Well, let me ask you this question here. I, I, I want to get a, a more emphatic point of view from you. Are you saying you should work <laughs> while you're in school or not work while you're in school? And then tell me your biggest compelling reason. I don't have a strong opinion either way. I Perfect. Think, <laughs> I, I, I think it depends on your situation. Like if well, you, talk about it from your situation. My situation, I just didn't like not having income. I just needed something because I had to buy supplies and right. gas and all that stuff. So you had no choice. No, you always have a choice. No, I did have a choice. Everybody has a choice, man. Yeah, it is a choice. Mm -hmm. But for me personally, I, I probably, in retrospect, I probably shouldn't have because it also depends on how you learn. And right. I should have, like, I need to calm down and have plenty of time to think about what I'm doing. So I probably shouldn't have done all that work except for art network was very helpful but the office job was just a job to earn money okay. i have a question can i well, ask a question yeah, about matthew's story yeah yes you I can ask, ask you can question. ask uh, i, I want to wrap up what erica's talking about okay. so i'm still a little confused i just want a more <laughs> kind of emphatic <laughs> answer because this show like i want to sharpen our point of view and through debate and dialogue of kind of this robust conversation, we can help young people who are maybe in high school or in college right now who are thinking about this very thing. So I want to be able to give different points of view and, and be able to clearly articulate that as much as possible. So if I'm understanding Erica's situation here is maybe the school wasn't as challenging or maybe she'd like to learn in different ways and she needed to buy a few things so the only way she could do that on top of paying for school was to get work. And, and she's saying that work was somewhat relevant. It was on campus. It was something very manageable, right? That's kind of what you're saying. Uh, a little bit. I just, 
Yeah, I guess basically, especially the job that pertained to, I, I went to for motion design and uh, video is part of motion design. So that job helped me with my major. But uh, the, the other job I did just that to earn m money. That's. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Yeah. okay I, have, I have no idea what we're doing. Yeah, now. Chris, that was okay, your fault. That's fine. I, I try, I try well. Um, no, I blame Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sitting here, man. I'm right, Let me ask Matthew person. my question, Let's man. Go I'm gonna make a good point here. Like, go ahead, make Matthew, a good point. in your story, you said you discovered motion graphics because you worked for Chris, right? No, I, no, uh, no, I took no, his no. class. Took you class. took his class. I took his class. Okay. And because I discovered motion design as a potential career, then I dropped everything and focused 100% on that. When you say dropped everything, you mean you quit working? That's correct. He quit girls, he quit drugs, he quit work. B-boy. He, he, just, like, he just dropped life, just everything <laughs> so that he can be the motion superstar that he was going to become. That's right. Okay. So I'm an extremist, right? Like, I, I don't like shades of gray so much I like black and white I'm either into something or I'm out of it and I can actually burn really hot and then I'm done and I move on with my life and I think it's that kind of polarity or that extremism that it's been able to be very helpful to me in my career so if you're looking at my life and my career and you want to be able to achieve the things that I've been able to achieve this is my template this is my plan and of course there are many ways to get there and there are other ways from other people and they're gonna to totally contradict what it is what I'm saying all right. So, Aaron, did you work while you were in school? Did you have an opinion or point of view on this? I'm not saying you have to say anything. I'm just asking. I did not. My parents raised me in the manner of thinking that your school is your work when you're a kid. So just focus on school. Focus on school. And that's yeah. what you did. You focused 100% on school the entire time. I don't agree with that way of thinking. I feel like <laughs> it would have been better to go have a job because you get some life experience. I feel like Matthew's story is a good example because he would have never... We wanted to go back to school if he hadn't been working, right? What? Like, he had to drop everything, meaning his jobs and everything, so it made it like a high-stakes sort of decision. It was a real decision. No, it was just no. nice to have the extra income. I just felt like I had the extra space to do, to do it. It's like, if I can make money while I'm in school, might as well do it so that, that right. I can support myself and don't have to worry about extra loans or asking my parents for anything. Yeah. I was just, I had the extra space, so. Okay, I wanted to do this one thing, and I think we want to talk to uh, everybody that's on, or yep. whoever that wants to say something, so we're, we're going to queue you up in a second. Okay, Matthew, you get them ready. They're queued up. I, I do want to say this one thing. I'm not telling you I came from means, I did not. I mean, I was just barely getting by, just barely, just buried in debt to while I was in school, and I was just thinking, how am I going to get out of this? But there's one thing that I did do. When I had free time, and free time meaning whatever time I had out of class, I would try to do double the amount of work that I was asked to, or I would try to take it to the extreme degree. And what happened is at the end of each semester, I had, I think, a better portfolio to show for it, and I would use that portfolio to apply for more scholarship money. And almost every single semester that I applied for the eight semesters that I was there, I got more scholarship. So I became a better student, a better designer, and the school rewarded me for this every single time. So when I entered school, I, I was very fortunate to get a 50% scholarship. By the time I finished school, I think it was like 90% of the school was paid for by the school itself. Wow. So that's one way. So instead of working at Abercrombie and Fitch or flipping burgers and fries or hustling on the side, doing a couple like little freelance things that weren't really adding to my knowledge base, it was probably gonna give me some work experience, but I just became this hyper-focused designer and was able to leverage that. And I, I got more money every single time I applied, almost. Now, let's do this. Let's jump to somebody who's got a point of view. Yeah. Whether you agree or not, come in strong. Who, who are we going to talk to? We got uh, Brand, uh, Brando, Brando, who's okay. queued in. He's got his mic and video. What's up, Brando? Hey, what's up, Chris? How are you doing? I'm doing good. I like that first you're coming in with a name like Brando, and then you've got a, a blue snowball uh, yeah, microphone. So you, you're, you're like ready for this, he's man. On it. We gotta you got hair and makeup. You are ready to rock on pro. short notice. I yes, love this. Sure. Okay, what do you got, man? Talk to me. Okay, um, I want to talk to you a little bit about my personal story. I'm 22, I'm studying architecture in Munich. And I realized like half the way that architecture is a really, uh, it's, it's really hard working as an architect. It takes a long sure time. Is. And therefore I started learning about um, a graphic design and uh, mostly about branding. I think my, my name suits very well for the, for the job. Mm -hmm. And so um, I started working on um, uh, looking out for, for some design jobs. And the thing was, 
I was too inexperienced for design, for getting a, an internship in design, but I was uh, actually quite good for architecture. And so I wanted to try to find something in the middle. And I'm working at a, um, I took a semester off only to work, only to dedicate my time. And now I'm working at an architecture studio as a graphic designer. Mm. So I got it both ways. And I think it's very, very important because it adds to my differentiating factor as a student and as a future professional. Uh, I think the money is the least thing I, uh, I should worry about, but it also um, uh, inspires me to make out also my own company. I've been going to a lot of groups of young students, young entrepreneurs, and most of them work very, very hard while they're studying. And most of the most innovative uh, startups in Munich, they actually are founded by students, working students who just uh, study what they have to do, they write the exams, they do is as, good as, as good as they can, but they focus, the main focus is on the work. And I believe that if students would mostly work and just learn on the on the other time, let's say 60 work and 40% on, on studying, I would believe that would be a better mix. Okay, six, how, so uh, I'm, I'm curious how you came up with that formula, 60%, 40, like why, why 60, 40? Well, well, that's just, uh, I would say, because the 50-50 thing doesn't work for me. I believe nothing is really 50-50, so you should okay, like push a little bit. So you want to edge it. So uh, yeah. I, I was reading some of the comments while listening to you. So 60% goes to work or school? Uh, to work. To work. So right now you're saying you value work more than school. Yes, because uh, at school um, you all do, you all have the same tasks. I mean, me and all the 100 people, we are going to do very similar projects with very similar teachers. And so we all do the same thing. So I believe that the thing that will differentiate you is what you do after school, after class, or what you work on after the time. Okay. Let me ask you something. Yeah. Are you learning from your instructors? Yes, I am. And he had to think about that because his instructors are, you're not done with school yet, right? No, I'm not. Yeah, okay. So if you're learning from your teachers, when your focus is only 40% in class, what do you think the difference is going to be if I was your classmate and I gave it not 100%, but 180%. So you're going to do 40% of the work or 40% of your energy, and I'm going to do twice as much as a normal student. So let's just say I'm going to do 200%. So I have already 160% more invested in this class than you. Who's going to emerge with more information? You or me? That's a great point. You, no, you, of course. You all the way, all the way. But I'm also talking about um, what differentiates you. <clears throat> because you would be learning only one path. And I think people who are multi, I don't know if the word is multi-talented or multidisciplinary, they usually are, can do, uh, they are most better suited for tasks that I would believe are more difficult or more um, dynamic, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. future oriented. So I think the combination of not only what you're studying, but maybe something else, it's a very powerful combination. Right, okay. Let's, let's continue this dialogue and debate for a little bit, all right? So I want to say, imagine yourself hiring a personal trainer at an elite gym. You're going to pay top dollar because I'm just talking about the United States. I'm not sure what it's like in Munich in terms of the education and the cost. I, mean, I don't know if you guys get it for free or not. But I'm going to pay yeah. top dollar for the best personal trainer at the best, most elite gym in the world. And it's going to cost me an arm and a leg to go to it. I show up and the, and the trainer starts pushing me and saying, you need to do this and we're working out together. But, you know, instead of doing 10 reps, I do four. Instead of lifting 100 pounds, I do 40 pounds. And that's what I do. And I'm like, you know what? Uh, I think I need to like, uh, I, I need to star in a stunt movie. I think that's a better use and that's how I'm going to get really fit. So I start doing that on the side so much that it starts to divert my attention away from this. And then there's this other person going to the exact same gym doing the 10 reps, lifting the 100 pounds or doing whatever, or 200 pounds, and they're, what kind of, who's going to get the gains here? This is the problem that I have with this, is if you're going to a good school and you have a great instructor and some really good classmates, are you leaving something behind by not 100% focused on that? Are you not going to the 3D prototyping lab and facility and really kind of tweaking and learning how you can create architecture that can't even be dreamt of in, in, the, in the normal way and you're doing some radical things or perhaps you're spending a lot of your time studying films and looking at how films can be a, a source of inspiration for architecture. That's the problem, see? So when you work, the idea is when you work, you apply what you learn. So the theory is that when you work, you are not taking in new information, you're just demonstrating what you've learned. 
Now, that's not to say that there are some work opportunities. I'd like to think that we're one of them. When you come to us, you're going to leave the experience smarter, better, faster, more informed. But we're, I think, relatively unique in that we, we almost take our internship program, our work experience thing, as almost as if it were like class. And that's just a reflection of our culture and my background having taught for 15 years. When we sit down, we talk to people, we teach them. We don't just say, get to work, start doing drawings, build models, and then leave you alone. Because then all you're doing is demonstrating that in the exchange and what you're going to get back is going to pale in comparison to the price you paid for what it is that you're supposed to be learning. Brando, back to you. Yeah, I agree. I mean, there was a great example about the workout. Well, I would, um, I think it's all, all is always a question about optimizing the time that you have according to your goals. And so if I would be like a CEO of a great enterprise, let's say I'm, I'm like Jeff Bezos, I will, I will go and work out, but I, my goal is not to be like a professional bodybuilder, but just to be healthy, but just to have the best thing in that, sort, in that short amount of time. So if I go to university, I'll give my very best while I'm at the university. But the thing is, what do I do after it? I mean, I'm not going to go for 100% at the university. I would give, I would say everything that I have then, but I will finish it off. And then I will go to the other test that is work. That is the practicality of the things. Because the problem also is I believe um, that people, or there a lot of my colleagues, my students, my friends, once they're done with the studying, they're like, okay, what do I do now? How, how do I put this into practice? How do I get a, how do I build my own uh, architecture? Should be? No one taught me these things. And those are things that you can only learn if you're outside of the of the university, if you're outside of the school. If you go and you go into the field, for example, I learned, I think, the most about graphing design when I was in an internship like a year ago. Mm -hmm. I had no idea about design. And this guy, he just said, oh, you study architecture, so you might be just creative. So come into my studio for the, and those were the hardest two months that I had to work. Right. But I learned so mm -hmm. much in that time. Right, right. I, so I think so yeah. here, you're saying that you have an interest in something and, and work became your best teacher. So then the argument is then why go to school? So I think a lot of us are programmed to go to school to get a job. So when we, we see that the, a job's available to us, that's a shortcut, right? It's like, well, if the point of me going to school is get a job, then that's the most direct path. And I can't argue that. But I don't think the point of going to school is to get a job. I think the point of going to school is to learn, to learn about yourself, to learn from your professors, and to go really deep into figuring out your voice, your point of view into the world. And there's no better or safer place to do it then in school to experiment, to try new things, to fail in catastrophic ways so you know who you are and what you want and what you're made of. I also believe when you're in school, it's also to build up a relationship with professors and classmates. So later on, when they're out in the field and they're working for uh, big clients and they need help, they're going to remember Brando. They're not going to remember the guy who didn't really show up. They're not going to remember the guy who barely did the minimum to get through because they were just too busy frolicking about and getting work on the side, right? That's the big difference. So I think what we have to do is we have to rewire our, our mind to say that if we're gonna be in school and we're gonna pay an exorbitant amount of money to be in school, whether it's through loans or parents or, or whatever else, however you get through it, through scholarships or grants, that you need to maximize and squeeze every little bit out. Now it's dangerous you brought up uh, Jeff Bezos here. Dangerous, and I, I'm glad you brought this up for this debate, okay Brando? Jeff Bezos Man. runs yeah. one of the most valuable companies on planet Earth. And every seemingly every category they go into, they destroy and dominate. I, I recall reading in many different articles in tech journals to say from other CEOs, how is it possible they can execute so well in so many different categories? I'll give you one example. In terms of AI and voice recognition, they're not necessarily perceived as a tech company in that way. Most people would think of, of Amazon as an e-commerce company that is unparalleled. But they came in after uh, Apple had Siri and, and Google. What is Google saying? I forget what their platform is. They have called. a name. It might just be called Google. <clears throat> hey, Google, hey, whatever Google, it is. Hey, right. Google, what is your name? Yeah, okay, platform. Google. <laughs> and they came out with Alexa, which is outperforming everything. And they're totally destroying it. And how is he able to do that? And I'm going to just venture a guess here. And if you talk to most successful executives, uh, entrepreneurs, they're going to tell you one thing. It's focus, focus, not distractions. They're not doing a thousand different things until they master that thing. Bezos did not go out and look like the Incredible Hulk on day one. He was actually just a typical executive at a tech company. It's not until after he's able to do all these things that he applied his mind to the next thing, to the next challenge. 
my concern for a lot of young people is the lack of focus. Just like my boys, they want to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and they're not going to ever get really good. Like one of my boys, he's 12 years old, he works for me. Every day I come home, he runs up to the door, he greets me with a giant big hug. He's like, Dad! And then, I, and then he tells me, he looks up at me with his little eyes and he says, I earned $5 today because I worked for you one hour. I said, that's incredible, my boy. And I said, how do you feel? He's like, I feel tired. He says, so if you've worked one hour, <laughs> what do you think that's going to be like when you work 10 hours or where you're, where you're like dad and you're working 18 hours a day? How's that going to feel? And tomorrow maybe you can try to do two hours. Like, nah, nah. I'm going to watch some Netflix. I'm going to play video games. I'm going to play a little Halo, a little Fortnite with my friends. So right now he lacks that focus. And I think that's the problem is we spread ourselves too thin. We try lots of little things. If you found your, your, your passion in life and you want to study graphic design and it's not available at your school, my suggestion is to take a semester off. I don't know what it's called. It's, it's not called a sabbatical. What is it called when you take a semester off? What's the school term for that? I, I think that is a sabbatical. Is it a sabbatical? I think so. <clears throat> okay, yeah, you take a, a year yeah. off or a semester off and you go and work and then you focus all your energy on that one person who's like giving you this opportunity to become an amazing graphic designer and you give it your all and you find like, you know what? This is it. Drop out of school, man. Drop out of school. Your turn, Brenda. <clears throat> so, if, if I get it correctly, the, the thing, and thank you so much for the answer, it was, mm -hmm. it was amazing. So the thing is, it's in focus. So if I understand it correctly, mm -hmm. it's not really what you do. So the order in which you do the things is not really that important, but how well you do the things. Yeah. For example, <clears throat> I know also people that like, like they worked before going to school, yep. like they worked for two years and then they go to college, uh, to school, I mean, uh, yeah, I will say college, and then they uh, they can do it very easily because they already have they already have um, experience. So afterwards, they get even a better job than they had before, but it was only because they focused on their first job. So that right. was a point that I, I didn't think about. So yeah. I have to I have to give the uh, the debate to you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to <clears throat> win the debate. I'm just trying to have a good conversation. I oh, love all oh, the points that you brought up. This is fantastic. Yeah. You're trying to win. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's that's good. Now I do want to say this, even for you, Brando. If you're going to school and you're starting, you're entering your junior, senior year, you're kind of up there, and you feel like all the foundational skills are done, and typically this is how most design schools are set up. Then the application of what you learn is done in the senior year. That might be the time for you to think of other options to go out into the field, but not after you've given it your all to learn and squeeze every drop of knowledge, every opportunity that you can from school. And I wrote down a couple little things here, things that you can do while you're still in school outside of the normal stuff that you're doing. You can attend other lectures from, from, from majors that are outside of your discipline. You can do workshops and seminars. You can read more books and watch videos and you can become a student of architecture or design or branding, whatever it is that you love, to do that to supplement that. And I think that's the way to do it. And when you feel like you've learned enough, back off on the gas pedal, shift your focus to something else and go get jacked like Jeff Bezos. And you could do that. And then <laughs> totally, I fully 100% totally support you. And you're going to find something that's going to be really amazing. All these doors are going to open up for you. So instead of getting that one potential internship, now you've got three job offers and then you have the rest of your life to continue to learn and to apply what it is that you know. Okay, so thanks very much, Brando, for joining me. Thank you for trying that's to win the debate. And let's get somebody yeah. else on the, on the call with us, man. Cool. Yeah, so. Thank you for the workshop in, in Milan. Oh, you were there, man? Yeah, you, yeah you, I recognize you, this you guy. Oh, I, I, I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm, I'm not the worst, man. I am the worst. Okay, awesome. Thanks for coming Thank out. <clears throat> Thanks for yeah, calling man. me out on my bad memory. <laughs> Chris, that's becoming a, a reoccurring thing, man. Yeah. It's not an act, you guys. I just, I'm just i just so bad with remembering faces and names. <clears throat> Excuse me. Cool. Okay. So who else are we going to talk to? Or you got to... I'm going to cue somebody up. Okay, awesome. I, I, I need probably two minutes to do that. I okay. think I want to turn it over to Aaron to see if there's any... Any audience, comments? Uh, comments or questions. Wow. Yeah. There's a lot of comments. Oh, my goodness. Aaron, did you, did you read anything that was cool? Um, I mean, there was a couple of ones coming in, but then you made some really good points, and I feel like everyone kind of <laughs> just started to agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to say to uh, this one person, a body like Aaron equals Tom Cruise. I'm not sure I see the resemblance. Or That's when I had the going. sunglasses on. <clears throat> oh, I see, I see. Yeah. You doing the Top Gun thing? I think it's uh, the newest uh, Mission Impossible. Oh, Mission Impossible, okay. There is Top Gun 2 uh, in production or 
um, Jessica, Jessica, it's 3 a.m. where she's at. She's half asleep. She's like, I looked like a potato, so she left the Zoom call. <clears throat> Chris, Can you guys carry the show for a little bit? Yeah, I, have a, a I saw some. Oh, go ahead. I want to ask you a question. Okay, go ahead and ask me first. Just like a lot of people <laughs> were talking about internships. Yeah. And how, how does that fit into mm -hmm. the education? I mean, that's like working. 100% love the idea of internships. 100% support that. I think that should be a requirement, not a, a thing that you kind of think about doing. I think any serious school should force you and require you to go out and work into the field for at least one semester. But that's perfect because during that semester, you're not doing school work as well. You're just going to go out into the field and you're going to work for somebody and you're going to learn from them and you're going to gain some really valuable experience that's going to make you smarter, faster, better for it. So I'm 100% in support of internships. There's an episode we put out about how to choose your next internship, so you probably want to watch that one too because not all internships are created equally. All right. Oh, Chris, I have somebody. Are up. you ready? All right. Yeah. I love this. Let's do it. <clears throat> I have Franz. Franz. Yeah, you're a little low. Uh, can you turn it up a little bit? Where's the mic part of what you're holding? I think you're holding the string. Yeah. What? Nothing's just, just the sound. Yeah, okay. Do you hear me? That's better. Yeah, yeah let's That's do that. Better? Yeah. So, hi, I'm Franz. I'm from Belgium, but I study in the Netherlands, mm -hmm. uh, in Maastricht. And my opinion is that we don't have to work. I mean, we shouldn't work while studying. Mm -hmm. But I might be biased, like a couple of things, because first of all, I have like a wealthy family, so I don't have to worry about like money and stuff. Mm -hmm. And also, the we don't have like big uh, scholarship debt. That's how we say. Mm -hmm. Like for one year at my university, which is like pretty good, it's only I call it uh, two thousand euros. So it's like way less expensive than in the US, wow. I think. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that's pretty much. All the universities in like Europe, except like from Paris and London and stuff, but like a lot of universities in Europe are not very expensive, and that's why I might be biased. And also, just my main like argument is that I think that like college is like the best years you can have, and you should like enjoy it like fully. So, after class, just go with your friends, enjoy your time. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, I mean, it's true, right? Yeah, sure. After like a long day, you don't want to work, mm. I guess. And some universities, you don't have time to work because sometimes you have like eight hours class. Yeah. And it's kind of difficult. And if you have free time, just do what you love instead of, yeah, working, I think. That's how I, that's how I feel. Okay. Well, let me, let me recap for everybody that's tuning in. Franz, who's in Belgium but studied in the Netherlands, um, let's re just recap. He's been cursed because his parents are wealthy. Education is cheap where he's at, and he's got a full head of hair. Life is hard for this guy. <laughs> 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 it's killing you, huh? So he's like, yeah, I believe you should go to school and party with your friends afterwards, right? <laughs> uh, that's wonderful. Okay. and, and you <laughs> I, Of course, like, passing the chance, but yeah. Well, okay. I mean, let's talk about this there. Now, now that Franz does not have to work, He's like, you should enjoy your life a little bit. And I find that, uh, you know, we had a nickname uh, for the Euros that went to Art Center. And, and they, they would have this kind of world philosophy. Do a little bit of class, do a little bit of talking, drink a little wine. I'm just extreme. I'm like the Terminator, man. I really yeah, am. You know that, right? You know where I'm going yeah, 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 sure to get with this. So <laughs> yeah. while my friends were busy partying, hanging out, shopping, or doing whatever it is they were doing, I was in the library. I was in the computer lab. I was up to four in the morning <clears throat> every single night, even though it wasn't necessary. I remember having this discussion with a couple of classmates of mine. I'm like, how many all-nighters have you had? And they're like, what do you mean all-nighters? Like, you know, nights where you barely sleep or like less than an hour. And like, oh, I've never had an all-nighter. And we're talking about juniors and seniors. And I got to tell you, like, I was thinking, oh, my God, how is it possible that you've not had an all-nighter? Because I've had an all-nighter once a week since semester one. How is this even possible? And they're like, oh, I just manage my time a little differently. I, I, when I get home, I do the work, and by 9 o'clock, I eat dinner, and then I'm in bed. It's like, wow. And I, I hate to say this, and I know I'm going to sound really judgmental when I say this, but so I guess I don't hate, hate it because I'm going to say it, was that person's work reflected their level of enthusiasm, enthusiasm and passion. There's a line that I'm going to mess up. 
about, about a movie uh, called Desperate Measures, where one person's yelling at another person, like the, the, the hero and the anti-hero, the protagonist and the antagonist. They're staring at each other. The antagonist says to the hero, you don't, uh, what is it, Aaron, you know this quote? Okay, I'm sorry. It's going to say something like, you don't know where I begin. Where you end is where I begin. So when that woman, that man, that student goes to sleep at 9 o'clock or goes out, that's just the beginning of my second or my third shift. And that's how I've been able to train myself to be super hardcore. So I love it. Euros, they know how to enjoy life. <clears throat> they know how to have a good time. But my, my point of view is, man, you got to get after it, man. You got to just put everything you have into this wonderful thing. And you're saying experience the full college life. And I agree with that. But just make sure you're giving it everything you got because you're in a very wonderful place, right? Like I said, yeah, you, sure. you have all your hair. You come from a wealthy family. <laughs> I have too much hair, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there's such a thing, right? And education is cheap in Europe, and that's wonderful. Yeah. So, all right, maybe maybe you can do like a work-study program and live abroad and, and open up your horizons, right? Yeah. That would be really and, cool for you. And also, one <laughs> last thing yes. like, is that... Uh, Working in my university is not very easy because we have like uh, exams every eight weeks. Mm -hmm. So like, like two weeks before the exams, you have to study like all the day, you know. Mm. And that's why it's quite difficult for my university. Mm -hmm. And that's why I don't know anybody that's working while studying. I see. And everybody is like focusing on the exams mm -hmm. and just passing the, the the year, you know. Okay. And what are you studying uh, in school? Uh, I studied uh, international business. Oh, okay. Hence the exams. That must be tough, man. Yeah. Yeah. Not, you got to figure out but... what to do with all that money, right? International business. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not really. <laughs> okay. More about management, but yeah. I see, I see. Well, I'm just curious. What are you doing on this channel? Uh, this is mostly for creative people. Do you? Is there a creative because, part uh, inside of you? I design. Uh, oh, like you design too? Time. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Like, uh, do logo design on my free time. That's like fashion a hobby and mm -hmm. I want it like to be my future to work okay and like you said earlier uh, for me university right now is to learn not yes. to get like a degree or something I want to work to learn how to handle like a company mm -hmm. to manage it oh That's interesting it's in a business and uh, yeah I really want to create my agency of design or something else I don't know but that's what what I want to do because I don't see myself uh, working for some somebody else. Mm. I and, see. Yeah, that's why I'm learning at uh, like Maastricht in the international business. And also, what's great about this university is that on the third year, so now I'm going to my third, second year. Mm -hmm. on the third year, you have to go abroad for one year for an exchange or an yeah. internship, mm -hmm. and you have to. So I think that's good. Great. And that's why. Okay, so fantastic. So all you designers that are in Europe, if you're close to Belgium, like by the time uh, Franz has graduated, maybe he'll have started an agency. He'll need lots of designers to work with. Or maybe you're a superstar designer and you need a guy or a gal who's got like awesome <laughs> international business management skills. This is this is your partner potentially. So this is fantastic. Let's follow up with you in a year and a half and let's see what happens, all right, when you're done with school. All right, all right thanks. I, I wish you well. Yeah. Take care, man. Thank you. All right, Matthew, who else we got? What else are we doing now? Get another one, but let me turn it over to Aaron while I cue somebody else. Let's do that. Aaron, what's up? Tell uh, me what's up. Just some comments. They're okay. saying uh, the good looking guy always wins, just like Sean yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? There is some study that good looking people do better in life, have more opportunities, more doors open to them, and that's why this is happening. <laughs> okay, what else is going on? Um, it, I feel like this working while you go to school thing, it, it only happens here in the States. No, it's we only have, a no, thing no, here. No, really, I don't think so. Well, we know that in in some parts of Europe, uh, education is very affordable, as it should be, or free, because they believe it to be a right and not a privilege. And I do want to say this: Hey, Brando was a pretty good-looking guy too, man. Who's Brando? Oh, yeah, the other guy, so. the one that you remembered. Sure, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> friend Brando from Milan. Ciao, <laughs> ciao, Brando. Okay, um, we got somebody. Uh, Matthew's oh. only gonna put on good-looking people from here on out, so no <laughs> ugly people, Matthew. <laughs> oh. All right. But you can't cut to me then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, talking about our, our Zoom participants. <laughs> only good-looking people. Okay, who's who's the next good-looking guy? We got Jesus. Jesus, what up? What up? In the name of the Father, let's do this. Yes. 
Well, I come from Mexico and I just wanted to say my opinion. Love it. About this. Uh, maybe you should do work, but more as an experience for you in order to just like when you go to school or you talk to a teacher or you go to a seminar or you watch the future and all that. Mm -hmm. You maybe try to do work in order to know if there is something you need to learn more. Maybe you go to school and if you go only to school, you only know what your teacher tells you. And you may think that is very good information and it's the best. But if you go to work and you met someone that is working in the industry, maybe you start to learn that eh, maybe my teacher is not really, how you say, has not a lot of experience in this. Mm -hmm. Or maybe that is not that good information. Okay. Or maybe it's the other way around. Yeah. You go to yep, yep. And, you, and be certain that the school is telling you what you need to know. Okay. I love that point of view. Allow me to good. Let's yeah. allow me to respond. Okay. That's me sharpening my knives. Not I'm not cleaning my hands. Okay. Let me respond to that. I don't think it's okay for you to go to school and not be an active participant in choosing your instructors and your classes. Do not be sheep just drawn into the slaughter. Because let's just say all schools are not created equal and some schools are designed just to take your money. In fact, there are a couple of schools in the United States that are being sued or under investigation right now because essentially what they are, they're a loan operation, right? They use the school as a front to apply for loans on your behalf and then they get money and they put you in debt and then they send you out the door and by the time you're done, you're like, what has happened to me? I'm $100,000, $200,000 in debt and I have no practical knowledge that I can go out and get a job with to pay down my loans. That is a big, big problem. So Jesus is correct in saying that, you know, you need to have some kind of context and I'm going to tell you how to do this without going to work. When I first entered school, I was in my first semester, luckily, uh, I befriended a few people who were upper term, who were sophomores, juniors, and seniors. And I, I think they recognized in me at that time, I'm going to give myself a little bit of credit, like this is a super intense guy who wants to learn. And so they weren't like turning their noses at me and saying, you're just a kid. What do you know? Get out of my face, freshman, right? So I became friends with them. And I would ask each and every one of them, who was the best teacher you had? What was the best class you had? And I would just write down, and why do you say that? Oh, okay, because they're really tough. Or somebody would say, don't take that teacher. They're really hard. So I would say, no, I'm not going to listen to that person because difficulty should not be a factor in determining what teacher or what class you take. So that's how I got myself into a lot of trouble. Like, you need to take this person for painting, Chris. You need to take Stan for, for VizCom 3. You're good enough to do that. And I hadn't taken VizCom 1 or 2, and apparently I was not good enough to take that class. But they gave me a lot of information. So I was never just going to enter into a class and say, this is what I was just given. And I was shocked later on as I'm nearing graduation, I would ask people like, oh, did you have Roland Young as a professor? Did you have Simon Johnson for type? And they would say to me, no, I, I, I didn't know to take them or I heard he was really hard or the class was full so I couldn't take it. And I said, did you do everything in your power to take that class? Like, what do you mean? Did you show up at 8 a.m. when registration was open? No, I just waited for the normal time. I said, when, you, when the class was full and you couldn't get in, did you try to add that class? Did you make a big stink about it to the department chair because you are paying for this education? And they said, no, I didn't do that. So now I'm going to flip it around. That was my experience as a student. Now I'm going to tell you my experience as a professor, right? So my class has a cap and Art Center wonderfully keeps the class sizes relatively small. Sometimes I have eight, sometimes I have 12 students. And as sometimes is the case, there are more students that want to take the class than what is allowed. And so they show up on day one, there's six of them, and they have their ad forms. Will you sign this? I said, I can't. There's only, I, I can only let 12 people in. And they said, well, they will let me in if you sign this form. I said, well, it's not fair. There's six of you. I can add one of you. Or maybe I'll add two of you. Okay? And that's it. How will we determine this? So we put names in a hat. I drew, drew out two names. And four people left. And the two stayed. But something uh, remarkable happened the very next class. A woman came back. And she said that, I thought it was rather random and arbitrary and I really want to take your class. I went and spoke to my department chair and I insisted that I'd be able to take this class and I made a case of it. And they're saying, and now I have this letter from the department chair asking you specifically for a favor, an exception to add this one student. And I was like, dang, all right, I, I respect the moxie in this woman. 
she demanded from her teach or her department chair to let her into the class. And I was like, okay, what is one more student? I'll sign this. And I signed it and she was in. So that's what I mean in terms of the intensity. When you want something, you don't stop, you don't accept, and you don't just go in into it blind, not knowing what it is that you're getting yourself into. Seek out the hardest classes, the most rigorous uh, courses and the classes, the, the hardest teachers. That's what you want. That's what you're going to get from it. Now, if you need context outside and do that, that's fine. But the best thing to do is talk to the people who have already experienced the, the classes before you. Talk to them. Ask the people you respect. What classes did you get the most from? And go with that. All right? So excellent point that you brought up, Jesus, in terms of knowing what is good and what is bad. And you should know, right? When you stick your hand in boiling hot water, you know it burns. When you show up to a class and the teacher is like saying different things or is noncommittal, it doesn't appear like they've done anything important in their life, you also know that's a bad class. Drop that, drop that class ASAP. It's better that you do nothing than to be a part of that class. All right, man? Right. You got you got anything else you want to say, Jesus? Well, no, maybe just that and well that this doesn't I don't know, maybe this is for people that just don't feel that one answer or the other. Just keep it, keep in mind that your job is trying to get the best information, the best education you can and be as prepared as you can. Yep. It's not like never try this or never try that. Just be be certain that what you're learning is good for you. And if you feel it's not, always try to uh, orient yourself to that direction. Yep. Okay. Thank you very much for joining us on the show today, and thanks for tuning in, man. Okay. Thanks. What else do we got? Let's look at some other comments while Matt queues up the next person, and then we're going to wrap up the show, I think. Yeah, a couple of people were commenting that uh, our, the last gentleman was very articulate. So, Jesus, good job, Props man. to you. Or, or were they talking about Franz? No, no this Jesus. last guy. Yeah, okay. Jesus. You could say his name. I'm oh, sorry, I forgot. All right, cool. I'm focused on the next thing I'm going to say. Go ahead, say it. Uh, a lot of people are saying, like this guy was saying, I worked at a bar as a bouncer. I had a kid and went to school full time. Mm. And another guy said from India, I would love to concentrate only on my studies, but due to current financial situations, the only way I can obtain a degree is by working and putting myself through school. So a lot of people have no choice. Mm -hmm. They have to work to go to school. Mm -hmm. So like, what do you think about that? Mm-hmm. I like that. I like that. I'm going to respond to that. Before I respond to it, I'm going to ask Matthew. Matthew, do you have a point of view on that, or are you too focused on reading comments? Uh, I'm too focused on setting up the next thing. Okay. Aaron, I would like for your opinion on this before I give you mine. My opinion? I'll be honest with you. I be don't have a really me. strong opinion here, so I feel like every time I try to talk and say something, it comes out weird because <laughs> I, I just I don't believe in it too much yet. You okay. Know? That's okay. what happened to me. <laughs> I get I'm it. I'm just here it. to support you, man. I, I love your support. So both you and Erica, thank you. So I love that if I ask you a question, you don't have an answer. You, you're as transparent as you can. It's like, I don't have a point of view, so let's move on. Perfect. All right, let's talk about this. I did see a lot of these comments where somebody's a single parent or raising a family is married and they have to do this and they, they see no other way, right? So this is like kind of a weird conundrum, a catch-22, where you want to go to school so you can get a job, and you can't get a job because you need to get an education. So it's one of these things where it's really fractured, and I get it. Typically, if you're not a single parent, if you have a partner, what I would like to uh, suggest, if this is at all possible, I know I, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm trying, not being insensitive to this, is to have one partner focus on their career while the other one goes to school. Because there's no point in both you guys kind of spread so thin that you can't really be a great student so the jobs that you can get when you get out of school aren't great and you're not you're also not really there as a, as a dad or a mom and it's all messed up like they're not getting a parent you're not getting the education you're not making enough money and this is not going to solve your problem and i've seen many people at school uh classmates of mine and, and former students of mine whose partner either boyfriend or girlfriend was putting them through school and they, while the other one works, and that's how they made it work. And then when the one graduated, they went to work ASAP, and the other person went to school. I love seeing that. That's what partners are for. So this might be opening the can for a bigger discussion about finding the right partners in life, that you're both equally contributing to the relationship, and you realize that certain sacrifices have to be made. And I, the, one, the students that have this kind of complex life balance work school issue to juggle, they did it really well because they had a really great partner who knew that while they're in school, they're going to be really focused on that. So that meant like date night or looking after little Johnny was not going to be the priority for the time. 
because you have to make those sacrifices today for tomorrow. Jim Rohn talks about this a lot and he likes to talk about seasons and a metaphor with ants. And ants work all summer, all spring long to prepare for the winter and they're the most industrious kind of insects in the animal kingdom, right? They're always preparing for winter. So while other animals are freezing or starving, they have a nest egg of food and supplies so they're always they're always able to get through and survive. There's a lot of virtue to, to see from those people. So you gotta make those sacrifices. You have to give up something if you wanna get something you don't have. The last thing I wanna say is this. Degrees, at least in the design field and probably in other fields now too, are highly overrated. So don't look as, at the degree as your ticket to getting the job of your dreams. It's really what's in your head and what you know how to do. So seek out those opportunities first. It is quite possible that in this case, instead of going to school, that you seek some very low level entry, just like monkey work job at a firm you really want to work with or work at. And then you begin there and then you watch and you look over people's shoulders and you learn and you keep learning that way. That's the case of Mr. Danny Yount, who is one of the most revered, respected, main title designers living today. He did that. He worked odd and end jobs, learned as much as he could, read the manuals, and worked his way up until he became the designer he is today. And almost all of that was self-taught. So he didn't need a degree. He didn't even go to school, I think, past high school. I don't, I don't know if he even went to college, right. right? And he's doing just fine. There's this fallacy that's been propagated up that degrees mean something. They mean something if you're a doctor or a lawyer, but in the world of design, it doesn't mean jack. This is from 23 years of working. I, I don't care where you went to school. I don't care if you went to school. I don't care what degree you got. If you're willing to show up, if you have a good head on your shoulders and you're willing to learn, I think you have the potential of becoming great. Let's move on. Do we have another person that wants to talk and add to this debate? We do, we have uh, Nicholas joining us. Is Nicholas good looking? I only choose the best, man. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him, nice, all shy. He's like, oh, you guys. <laughs> Come on, nice man. <laughs> all right, all right. You are a pretty good looking guy, Nicholas. Where are you from, man? Uh, I'm from Slovenia. Slovenia. Is that where everybody's yeah. tall and good looking? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a moment of awkwardness. Okay, what's your point of view, man? Uh, so basically, I'm from Slovenia, which is from Europe, and also our edu uh, edu education system is free. Um, I'm currently going to third year of the university for graphic interactive communications, which mm -hmm. is graphic design, basically. Uh, and um, I just feel like I'm not getting much of the, I don't know, knowledge from the university. so. I think by working, I have the best chances of getting any real practical knowledge. Okay. So if I'm yeah. hearing you correctly, you're a little concerned that your teachers are not really giving you practical knowledge, that there's a little question mark that they may or may not know what they're talking about. Is that what I'm hearing? Basically, yeah. Okay. Like, I don't want to mince words. So your teachers suck. They don't have any real work experience. They're, they're career teachers. and. That's a problem. Okay, so that's wonderful. So here's where we, we have an interesting thing where education is free, right? One of my biggest yeah. arguments thus far was you paid all this money to learn something only to do something else. That didn't make sense. But when you pay nothing for the education, you can choose to do whatever you want because you're not giving up that money to learn something else. So this is wonderful. I guess it's nice to be in Europe. <laughs> Dang, we should have grew up over there. there. I want to change the system here, man, and we're going to do our best to make education affordable. But <clears throat> all right. So in your case, when when it's free in that particular situation, do whatever you want, learn from wherever. And I think you do have to start to supplement your education because, truth be told, there are not, not a ton of Slovenia uh, designers that I know that's like a household name, right? You got to. So yeah. let's figure this thing out, man. What are you going to say? I didn't mean to cut you off. <clears throat> Well, uh, thanks for the input. Uh, I'm actually now in the process of somehow finding work. And I mean, I basically, mm -hmm. I did really good work in school. Uh, and I've actually, one of the professors also said I do really good stuff. And then he connected with one of the smaller agencies. But the problem there was that uh, I don't think they were that big enough that they could actually incorporate me. So the whole, the whole uh, relation got kind of, I don't know, they just didn't know what to do with me. So I'm currently looking 
for getting into a bigger agency, a studio, and I guess I would like your advice and input on how to best present myself there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay, I do want to say this. Uh, the, probably the single most important thing you can learn in school is learning how to learn. I know that sounds really weird, okay. learning how to learn. So while you're in school, and no school is perfect, they do their best and with what they have, right, whatever. Mm-hmm. And if you're in class, and you feel like, okay, I'm only gonna get so much from this class, <clears throat> you may want to lower the priority of that class and how much time it consumes from you. If you're not learning something, either drop the class or do the bare minimum to get a passing grade. Passing grade is like C or D, yeah. as long as you don't fail, right? And then spend the rest of your time devouring content and materials from people that you do feel like you're gonna learn from. So if there's a, an author, read, read the author, uh, read their book. Uh, watch their seminars or, or videos online. And since that's education is free, you have some money, you can do something with that, and that's great. And then this is fantastic. And it's wonderful to be in a place where that is actually an option where education is free so you can think about other things that you can do. Right? Mm. Hmm. Okay. So uh, what kind of programs are you learning on your own now? I mean, when you said that's what I'm doing, what kind of uh, educational materials well, are you using to supplement your, your knowledge? Of the future, of yeah, course. Well, of course, of course, I mean. Uh, uh, otherwise, I mean, I was mostly, I basically see you as the main source and guidance. Like, uh, I read the, the Stop Stealing Sheep. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm Perfect. Up, yes, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're just like, yeah, all around searching for books and stuff and going through li- the library. But mm-hmm. it's just like, I don't know how to then start. I don't know how to then start getting competitive and just like okay. going for my career. All right, I'm going to give you a tip. I'm going to give you a yeah. tip right now. Okay, everybody that's watching, if you want to get better at what you're doing, it's really straightforward. But you're going to have to get over yourself on this one little thing. What I want you to do is look at a piece of work that you really think, that's amazing. And I want you to do your best to copy it. You can learn so much by copying. And for many hundreds of years, this is how artists taught other artists. They would sit in a room and they would just work for, for masters and just copy their paintings to a point in which you could not tell the difference between what the artist did and his understudy. Okay? So that's what I, this, is an, this is an actual assignment I used to give to my students. I would say... Tell me who your heroes are. Just tell me the most amazing work that you feel like so far out of reach. And then they would pick all these things. And we'd look at them and say, okay, next week what I want you to do is come back and teach us how to do this work. And their jaws hit the floor. Like, no, we admire this work. How is it that we, we can do this? I said, I believe in learning how to learn. And truth yeah. be told, I don't know how to do that. So you guys do it and you figure it out. And here's the surprising part because you think, you know, what a cruel, mean teacher I am. In two weeks, not only were they able to figure out how to do something very close to what they admired, in some cases when I was critiquing the work, I mixed up which was the original and which was the copy. Okay? Not only did they do it, they had to teach the class and put together step-by-step instruction on how to do that very thing. And they all surprised themselves because I asked them at the beginning of the class, what's your level of confidence that you can actually pull this off? And most of them were between 1 and 3 on a scale of 10. Afterwards, I all gave them eight, nine, and some of them tens because of how good they were. The only rule, the only rule to the master copy was you cannot use any element from the original image. You can't just literally lift that image and put it on top of yours and then change some things. They had to recreate every element in one way or the other. And so people learn how to use Illustrator. They, they learn how to make brushes. They learn how to uh, photograph 3D, uh, I mean real models because they didn't know how to do 3D. Some of them didn't know how to illustrate, so they figured out how to use Poser and render a a cell shaded thing and then Photoshop their way through it. So that's incredible. I'm gonna tell you guys right now, that's one of the best ways to learn. And the reason why I said you have to get over one thing is people have a hang up over copying things. Like when I look at a website and it's doing really well in terms of its messaging and the way it flows through like a cool landing page, I don't try to look at it to, to kind of dis- dissect parts of it. I look at the whole thing and I just copy the whole structure. If they have a giant headline, I try and figure out what my giant headline is. If they come in with a value proposition that's important as a benefit to the customers, that's what I do. If they have three customer testimonials afterwards, I put in three customer testimonials. That's what you do. That's how you learn. You would be an idiot. You'd be wasting your time if you did it any other way. There's, there's the world is full of information you're not utilizing it if you're not going to do that. So that's how I'm going to tell you to learn, okay? 
All right, Nicholas? Yeah. All right. Stay good looking, stay lean, stay tall. Good talking to you. <laughs> Let's talk to somebody else, Matthew. Thanks. Or, or Aaron. Who? Aaron, read me a good comment. There's so many comments on yeah, YouTube there, and Facebook. Yeah, there's a little bit of an argument about what's the poorest country. You know, what <laughs> like. <laughs> Let's not go there. There are a lot of poor countries out yeah. there, unfortunately. Yeah, there's a couple of uh, interesting comments. I uh, copied and pasted them here. Okay, what do we got? Uh, basically, uh, this uh, Celine Hernandez is saying, like, it's important to, to work in your field to gain experience if that's really what you want to do. But if you're just working to get by, that that's... Not, like that's what you're saying, right? It, that if you have a job and you're looking at it as you're learning, you're getting education from this job, then you should do that. If your school is like a crappy school and you're not learning anything, but if you're just working because you need some money, that's not a good reason. All right, how about I make a metaphor for you, Aaron? You and I we go to lunch quite often. We drive places, and you'll see me. And we're driving in in California in Los Angeles. The freeways here are like five, six lanes wide. There's lots of lanes, right? And our general point of frustration is when somebody straddles two lanes. Like, are you going to exit or are you going to stay in this lane because you're creating a potential hazard for everybody behind you because you're a little indecisive, right? Or you see somebody turn on the turn signal and then they don't go and they, like, what is going on? That's it. To me, that's the metaphor for your life. Pick a lane and just go down a lane. If you learn more from work, pick that lane and just go down that lane. If you learn more from school, do that. If you have 99 teachers at school that suck, but one that's really good. I would do three independent studies with them. I would just do everything I can to just suck up as much knowledge from that one instructor as you can. That's what I did. Simon Johnson, a, a type uh, instructor at Art Center, I took him for type one, for type two, for advanced corporate design. I did an internship for him, and I've, kept a, uh, I've maintained a relationship with him afterwards. That's what I did. Uh, Roland Young, an amazing teacher, took him for com design, intro to advertising. Again, I took as much as I could from each instructor that, that was giving me what I wanted in life. And it wasn't the same for everybody, obviously, because some people had Roland Young and didn't like the way he taught. He was too aggressive. He was too in your face. He was too intimidating. They took another instructor. That's totally fine. So everybody can figure out what is the best learning model for them, the modality. If you're a book reader, like, like some of us, and you like to read, that's great. If you don't like to read and you like to hear and through what is it, audiobooks, you can do that. If you like to listen to podcasts or watch YouTube videos or you need to do things with your hands, you're like a kinesthetic style learner, do that. Do whatever it is that makes you the best person that you can be. But for heaven's sake, pick a lane. That's all I want to say. Cool. All right, are we done? We got one more or are we, we got done? One more. We yeah. got one more. Okay, yeah. we're going to wrap this up, you guys, because the lane I'm picking right now is lunch. <laughs> okay. So, who we got, Matthew? Uh, we got John joining us. John. Last but not least, the best looking person thus far. <laughs> Let's rock and roll, John. Where are you from? It's the beard, man. I am. I'm from Wales. Wales. All right. So, um, what I want to discuss. Sorry, I'm nervous. So I'm shaving. Don't be but... nervous, man. <laughs> There's only a couple hundred people watching you right now. Don't, don't worry. Yeah, I noticed. Um, <laughs> so my experience is from not recent. Uh, I went to school. Mm -hmm nine years ago okay um and what i want to bring to that is this is for anybody who's in school anybody who's currently just getting ready to leave school to back up things that have been said earlier the tutors make the course if you've got somebody who who's willing to spend the time with you who gives you all the information you could possibly need then you're going to benefit from it without a shadow of a doubt however if you've got a tutor who isn't as interested as they could be you will you're going to slack i mean in regards to working while learning, do it. I mean, it brings you the practical skills when you leave school that you're going to need to, to manage. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be fair, I'm, I'm 30 now. I left school when I was 21. And uh, I'm a freelancer now. That's mm -hmm. what I do. Mm -hmm. I've, worked in, I've worked in the industry. I've worked for companies. I've worked in design studios. But personally, I find freelancing suits me to the ground. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, my point really is... Yes, do it. Do it. If, you, if you can't work, <laughs> while you're in school, yeah. work while you're in school, you'll do yourself so many favors in the long run. Okay. Fantastic. I Thanks. Mean, yeah, go ahead. Keep, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I thought. Sorry. <laughs> in regards to your statement earlier with uh, partners as well, mm -hmm. I'd like to stand testament to that. My partner, she's named Sarah. We're due to be married next year. Um, she was brilliant. When I was getting out of touch with design, um, I was really lagging on what was still in style, what wasn't in style. Mm -hmm. um, she supported me. 
So just for anybody who's got a partner as well, just speak to them, man. I mean, realistically, there's just too much of this. I can't afford to go to school. I can't afford to do this. I can't afford to do that. But then the reality is if it's a passion and if it's a dream, find a way to make it work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, I do want to say this, and thank you uh, for mentioning your life partner and somebody who you're going to get married to. So first of all, you want to do it right. You want to get married. Make sure that you're committed. She's supporting you. And then you want to make sure you turn around and give her the same support. So once you get work and you're on your feet, just say, honey, what was your dream? I don't want it to be about my dream. And I'll support you, too, to encourage her, right? That would be fantastic. You never decided, ever. Like, <laughs> what do you want to do? Just like, I have no idea. Well, that's okay. No but you know what? To, to be fair, though, to be fair, she supported you for a long time. And she, she makes a good... Uh, she, she's a good partner in that way, but maybe when you're in a place where you're, you're, you're feeling good, maybe that'll just take some pressure off her and she can actually clear her mind and kind of listen to her heart. Her heart. Uh, let me try and say that correctly. Okay? I like that. Try it again. <laughs> yeah. You know, listen to her heart and follow your heart's desire, man. And, and yeah. that's how you can be fulfilled. Because one thing that I do know, having been married now for quite a few years, going on two decades, I just do want to say this, is that when both people are happy and pursuing what it is they want in life, that makes for a much stronger relationship whether you're married or life partners whatever it is you both yeah. need to be happy because otherwise at some point somebody might start to feel resentful that you got your life and you have your dream and you're the star and you get to do all your things but then they've been in the back kind of in the the, the passenger seat supporting you the whole time so i think that's really important i don't want to get too far off in relationships because this is not a relationship show just because they'll keep going on and on and on yeah but, to be fair like the um the other thing, earlier on I put um, in regards to what if you don't have a degree and you answered that spot on, might I add, in the regards to it. Because I mean, to be fair, I've recently started a, well, effectively it's going to be a design agency. Mm -hmm. uh, I've started the Skull Trap and um, with that, it's like that's coming on slowly but surely. And to be fair, my, my, I had a point leading up to this. Why is it when you go in karma in front of like 100 people, you get nervous? Oh, it's only 250. Don't worry. It's only 250. That yeah. makes it just that little bit better. You know? <laughs> <laughs> did you remember yeah. it? Yes, I did. Okay. In regards to it, um, when it comes to hiring people, I know from matter of fact, from personal experience, when I had a lack of experience, I still had people going to me, right, yeah, you've got the skills there. We can see you've got the skills. We'll utilize them on stage one, two, three, four, five. And at any point, if somebody does come up and go, well, I'm not qualified, but you can see that skill about them, then it's definitely one of those things. The degree doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. We work in a creative field, and as such, the, crea the creativity versus the ability is sometimes what's needed to be there, the actual drive to see what somebody's going to do instead right. of them um, showing me a piece of paper and going, yes, I'm qualified to do this. You might have the qualifications, but can we do the job? Yep. Okay. Thank you for weighing in on that and, and backing me up on that. And I will say this as a person who has seen and hired so many people, hundreds, if not thousands of resumes before, some people have gone to school and are terrible. And some people who have never gone to school and have never been formally trained are incredible. So that doesn't mean anything. There's no predictor of success to me. It's the individual. It's their portfolio. Okay. I want to share a short story and then I want to cut to Zach Wallace because I want to promote the next episode. I want to talk about it a little bit, okay? So thanks for joining us, John. Thanks for bringing no, us No, thank strong. you, bud. Okay. Thank you guys so much. <clears throat> You're welcome. I'm going to tell you a story about Karen Wang. She was a, a former student of mine. She took sequential design with me. And she brought some kind of incredible energy and enthusiasm and curiosity that when I taught again, I asked her to be my TA. And she wound up TAing, TAing for me for three classes, maybe four. And so she got as much of what I had to offer as possible. And then after she finished school, uh, she came up to me and asked me, hey, can I be your apprentice? Can I be your assistant or whatever? I'm like, okay, I've not really had one. Let's do this. So she wound up working for me for a period of years. So like I said before, you, fly, you guys find somebody that you connect with. It could be someone in the working world or it could be a professor or it could even be a classmate. If a classmate is just a rock star, say, you know what, this is stupid. I'm not getting a lot from school, but I'd love to like do projects with you because I really look up to you. I, I admire the way you think and the way you solve problems. I can learn from you. So seek those people out and go 100%. Be committed to it. Everybody else that's not named Zach Wallace on the call, please mute your microphone. I, I hear a trash pet, pet, truck pet, backing up here. Zach Wallace, how are you doing, man? 
Pretty good. How okay, Zach. So here's the thing, full confession, full transparency. I brought Zach on because I thought he had this hot debate with me because he wanted to have an argument with me about uh, not working or working while in school. And it turns out he wanted to talk about something totally different. My bad, my brain is scrambled. I'm not as young as I used to be, of course. So Zach, you had a question. Why don't you ask your question? I'm not gonna answer it, but we will do a follow-up episode for everybody who wants to hear this. Come in strong, what's your question, Zach? I am building freelance into a business, and so there's lots of questions regarding how to organize that, how to find bigger clients, how to charge more, how to present yourself better than you know cheap overseas labor, and because there's so much competition in web development, you know. So I don't really want to become huge and become an agency and have a ton of employees and stuff. I just want to make a good living and build a freelance business. Okay, Zach, you did not an excellent job of presenting yourself there. Let me let me help you out there, okay. Zach is a developer. He's watched several of our episodes when we talk about value-based pricing. He's intrigued by it. He wants to be able to do it. He doesn't know how a developer <clears throat> can actually approach doing value-based pricing, so we're gonna get into that. That presents a lot of challenges for me because for the most part, if you're a developer, it's kind of a commodity. A lot of different people can do it, so unfortunately, it tends to go to a qualified person, but whoever is going to come in at the lowest price. So that's a big problem, a big challenge to solve. <clears throat> I'm not 100% confident I can help figure this thing out, but I'm going to give it my darndest. So Zach, thanks for setting that up. I think it's time for us to say goodbye to every single person. Uh, I haven't said goodbye to or hello to the Dream Team in a long time. Right now it's Aaron, Matthew, and Erica. Thank you for making this show happen. I know there's a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff that you guys do, and Erica's always quick on the keys so that's why the show runs so smoothly that's why my stress level is much lower than it used to be and I also want to thank everybody that's joined us today on this live webinar conference call kind of thing and bringing in your points of view I love seeing you guys I love talking to you and Brando I love seeing you again right is he still there there he is yeah. <laughs> give me a thumbs up ka -cha, ka -cha. <laughs> there we go okay so at this point, I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you for tuning in on Facebook and on YouTube. I'm going to read a lot of your comments and continue to answer them, I think, on Facebook especially. And let's get out of here. So I'm going to, where do we play the music? Where's the music? <clears throat>